Here's a little riddle for you. What do you get when you mix cherry, walnut, maple, and throw in a little poplar for good measure? A paper towel holder. Duh! Why don't you come along with me? Let's get started. This project is going to take some walnut and maple and cherry as well as a little poplar, some wood glue, assorted screws, drill bits, coffee, and Pringles. First I'm going to start by sketching out the design. I looked at vintage camper clip art online and I kind of combined a few different options from different ones I've seen and I've come up with a design that I like. By drawing it out first, it allows us to get all the proportions of the different species, all of the elements, the windows, the doors, and everything scaled like we want. And once we get our picture like we want it, we'll use that to create a more permanent template with a piece of MDF. And that's what we're doing here. I cut out the paper template, and now I'm tracing it on a piece of half inch MDF. This is the finished template. Now the template serves a couple different functions. First of all, it's the router guide for cutting out these campers. But secondly, it serves as kind of a notepad. It shows us what each layer measures, what color it is, dark meaning walnut, light meaning maple, and it also shows us the location of our window and our door. Now we're going to cut up the strips of our different species that make up our camper. Once we've cut them, we're going to take them over here to the joiner and we're going to clean up both edges. This is what I found inside of part of the maple. Lots of worm holes. I just thought this was kind of cool and I wanted to share it with you. That's on one end, but the other end is perfectly fine. Now that we've got all our strips cut and edged, we're going to glue them together. Now I've set up my pipe clamps so that we can glue up several blanks at once. And I've put some wax paper down on top of them so that any glue squeeze out doesn't stick. Once the blanks are dry, we run them through our surface planer to even up all of the layers. Now we're going to take a blank and we're going to clamp it to our template. We're going to drill some holes through these two holes in the template. Don't worry, these will be covered later with the door and the window. And then we're going to trace it onto our blank. Once that's done, we'll take it over to the bandsaw and we're going to cut it out. We made sure to leave plenty of line there. We don't want to cut through the line because we're going to clean it up with our router. The only exception is right in here by the tongue where our router bit can't get. We cut that to the line. Now using some screws, we're going to fasten the template down to the blank through the holes that we drilled before into the sacrificial board below so that we can use this router bit. It's called a templing bit. It's got a bearing that follows our template and it will cut out the piece below exactly the same shape as the piece above. The piece above being our template. Next we're going to slide our blank into this jig we made for cutting the door. We're going to use our router again, but this time with an inlay kit. It has a little brass bearing that's going to follow the jig. First we make an outline, and then we're going to clean up the inside by just routing it out. And once we take it out, you can see there's the recess. We're going to do the same thing for the window in this jig we built. You can see that these holes in the window and the door also come in handy for securing the blank.
there's the window recess. Now we need to cut the inlays that go in these recesses. To cut our inlays, we're going to use the same inlay router bit, but we're going to take this little brass collar off. By running it around the same template, it cuts on the outside of the line, and it leaves an inlay piece that is exactly the size of the hole we cut out. This didn't cut all the way through the board because we only need a thin piece of this. So to get it out of the board, we're going to cut it to a more manageable size and then we're going to resaw it over on the table saw. Now it's best if you can do this on a band saw. I could not do it on my band saw so I used a table saw. But you got to be really careful. Now we just need to round over the corners of our inlay so that it fits in our recess. And here you can see it does really tight. I don't want to push it in yet because I want to put some glue under it. I'm not going to glue the area where the window in the door was going to be because we're going to cut that out and it'll be easier to remove that piece if it's not glued underneath there. Now we're going to slide the blank back into our door cutting template. We're going to wedge it in and then insert our screw and get it really secure. And now to cut the window in the door, I'm going to change the opening a little bit by adding these blocks. Now we've added our brass bearing back to our inlay set because we're going to cut out the center. And because we didn't glue underneath the window, it falls right out. We don't have to route all of that area out. And now we're going to cut the window inlays out of some cherry. I've cut these slightly thinner than the other inlays so that they recess in the opening a little bit. This kind of makes them stand out more and it also adds a little visual interest. Now it's time to make the base of our paper towel holder. I made another template out of MDF and now I'm tracing it onto a piece of walnut. We've cut it out roughly again leaving the line, reattaching our template, and now we're going to flush it up with the router. But instead of using the handheld router, we've put the bit in our router table. Now with a quarter inch round over bit, we're going to ease the edges of both the top and the bottom of the base. Over at the drill press, we're going to drill a hole for a screw to mount our camper to our base. Before we do that, we're going to put some rubber feet on the base so that it doesn't scoot around on us. I've clamped together my 123 blocks so that I can clamp my camper base to it and this will form a very nice plumb straight platform for drilling the hole for the screw in our camper base. I wanted to make sure this thing was perfectly 90 degrees so that I didn't drill out of the face of my camper and ruin it. Now with a little glue and the screw coming up from the bottom, we're going to attach the camper to the base. Then we just make sure everything is straight. I've got a poplar dowel and I'm slicing off a real thin piece to use as the tire for our camper. Now I sand a flat spot on the bottom and then a little glue and some careful positioning covers up the little spacer block that our screw went through to hold our camper. 
These dowels are also poplar, but you can see there's a big difference in the color. These are all heartwood instead of sapwood, and it makes them dark. I found these in the bin at the big box store, and I decided they'd match our walnut really well. These are the dowels that are going to hold our paper towel roll. Now with a Forstner bit the same size as the dowel, we're going to drill a hole in the base, being careful not to go all the way through. Now a little glue in the hole. We set the dowel in there and make sure it's plumb, and then leave it to dry. Once it's dry, we're going to drill a hole from the bottom into the end of the dowel and we're going to insert a screw to help reinforce it a little bit more. For finish, I decided to use Odie's oil. Now this is the first time I've ever used it. It's a combination of oils and waxes and a lot of wood turners use it. I gotta say, I was pretty pleased with it. You keep applying coats until it won't absorb anymore and then you let it sit for a while and you buff it off. It smells really good and it's supposed to be food safe as well. And here's our finished fleet of little campers. I really like how they turned out. Check out the figuring in that maple. Each one is a little bit unique. And then the contrast between the light maple and the dark walnut and the lighter inlay of the cherry windows. This base even has some spalting on it. I'm really pleased with them. Well, I am really pleased with how this turned out. I really love how it looks and it's going to be very functional as well. You know, earlier this year, Mrs. Tinker and I bought a travel trailer. I was going to build one of these for us, but then I thought, if I go to all this trouble to make these jigs and all the setup time required, I could as easily make six as I could make one. So I've got five friends who have campers as well, and I'm going to be excited to give these as gifts, and I can't wait to see what they think. Well, thank you for watching till the end. If you think I've deserved it, give me a subscription. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Also, if you haven't done so, check out the TennesseeTinkerer.com. There's all kinds of projects on there that may or may not be on this channel that I think you'll find interesting, as well as some useful information. Lastly, I am now on Instagram at the Tennessee Tinkerer. I don't know how to use Instagram. Mrs. Tinkerer is an expert, though and she has promised to help me with it. Go over there, follow me. You'll get to see some previews of upcoming videos, maybe some cool projects that you won't see on this channel, things like that. Well, once again, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.